Hi. So this segment is going to explain how InnerSource works from a high level and with a drawing, with a diagram that we've used a lot of times to help people understand how this is going to work. We're going to talk about the common roles that are involved and how they interact. So let's start with an engineer. Here's the engineer and he is working on this code base here, which might be a feature, it might be an app, um, but he needs to change something in one of the main code bases over here. And so he wants to submit a change request or a pull request. He's not submitting a feature request. He's not requesting work from the people that work on this code base. He's actually giving them the code that will get the effect that he's looking for. Because he's read the code in the silo, and he thinks he knows how to fix it for what he needs. So he submits a pull request. Now, the second role is the trusted committer. Here's the trusted committer. We're going to make her be a woman. And she has been given the job during this period of work or this sprint to review all the code that is supposed to be merged into this, this silo, whether it's coming from her own people on the team or from somebody that's outside the team, which is InnerSource. When it's happening with her own people, that's just normal work. Although we find that often adding a trusted committer to the system means that code reviews become real. Because her job during this time is to not accept code that is going to be difficult to maintain because she's accepting ownership. It's like getting a puppy, right? Now we're going to talk about the roles of host and guest. So this person is the guest in this transaction, and this person is the host. Think about when you stay at somebody's house. You're the guest. You're arriving, and you have to conform, at least to a certain extent, to the host's house rules. So maybe the host wants you to take your shoes off before you walk around inside, and you figure that out, or they tell you. You know, you're not expected to figure it out just on your own. Uh, usually, they'll tell you if they want you to do something differently. And, and you're going to be a good guest, you're going to be polite, and you're going to do what they ask as long as it's reasonable. And then on their side, they want to be a good host. They want you to come back. They want you to be comfortable. So they're going to offer you, they're going to be polite, and they're going to offer you, you know, a comfortable place, um, some privacy, whatever you need to be comfortable in their space. That transaction is very similar to what we want to see in InnerSource. We want the engineer to be polite in his request, and we want the trusted committer to be very polite in their response because, you know, civil discourse being what it is, they'll get further. Both of them will. So this trusted committer is going to read the code, and she is going to send back some written comments. This is a form of mentorship. She's going to say, gosh, I'm sorry that you used this method. It wasn't documented very well, but we know that this is not going to work at the scale that you need to, this thing to work at or you haven't declared your variables in the way that we like to do it, could you please do it this other way, or um, any number of other possible things. We're writing the same feature and it's going to come out in the next release, so maybe you just want to use ours. Lots of different things that they might say. But the, what they don't do is rewrite the code because now this engineer has the opportunity to resubmit and the trusted committer will re-comment. And they might go around a few times before they get to a place where this pull request can actually be merged. And that'll be a great thing, right? So now let's talk about one more role, which is important in most corporations. There is the planning role. So I already said that this woman doesn't have to accept anything that isn't high enough quality or, or is somehow you know, out in left field to the charter of, of what they're trying to get done. In most organizations, there's central planning that kind of takes that particular discernment um, out of her hands a little bit and puts it in the hands of someone called the product owner. So the product owner, and they're usually symmetrical, there's usually two of them, um, will have a conversation often before this guy ever submits this. In an agile shop, the product owners will write the stories that are sent down to the engineers as, here's the work you have to get done today. And in some companies, notably PayPal, 
they will also say, and this one we think will be done best through Intersource. So some of that work is done ahead of time. This guy already knows that he's going to be submitting to this place, and this trusted committer already knows that there's going to be submission coming. It helps them plan a little bit better. And between the three roles, they can get the best outcome for all parties concerned so that the code is continually good, high quality, and manageable so that this individual can get their work done as quickly as they need to and so that the whole organization can move forward with the kinds of work that is going to do the business the best.